What it all boils down to is that we're all going to die. You and I have to decide how that's going to be for ourselves, for our loved ones, for our community, for the international community. Is it going to be with pain and suffering and abandonment and isolation and, and anxiety and depression? Is it going to be with community and support and accompaniment? That's the question. It's the quality of life which is important, uh, not the length of life. And so the dignity part of people getting ill and, and dying uh, is, you know, it's, it's inevitable. But the way in which they die is why there is uh, such an increase in palliative concern, palliative care, in caring for the person right up to the, the very last. Probably one patient who's experience at the end of life and inadequate pain management We've changed my attitudes about how and what programs we should have at our own institution it was this young man who had widely metastatic um, malignant melanoma and he was being cared for at our center um, but was discharged from the hospital and went home and had a acute event at home an acute pain crisis and was brought to an emergency room locally and when he got to that emergency room, they were hardly equipped to treat his pain, um, didn't know what to do, and profoundly undertreated him. And over a series of four or five hours, he um, writhed in pain, he was inadequately treated, and then he suddenly died. And his wife was um, young um, and came back to us after his death and said, you know, how could you let this happen to him? How could he die in an emergency room without my ever having the chance to say goodbye to him? Why couldn't they have treated his pain better? Um, why wouldn't they give him more medications? Why did they tell me that he had to wait because he had just gotten a dose of drug? And she went through every um, statement that was made to her by the physicians who were treating him, and she was enraged by it. And it made us, um, one, be very humbled by this extraordinary, awful experience she had and to see what impact it had on her. And it made us say that when these, that it, these episodes occur for our patients, we need to have 24-hour coverage for those patients. One of my brothers just died uh, in the past few months, and he had been palliative for three years. He used to tell me that he was, he'd gone well beyond his, uh, his best before date, and uh, and he was well taken care of uh, by a sensitive uh, doc and nurse who knew how to, to, uh, to allow him to live. My brother uh, died uh, in full knowledge that we'd had our last conversation and, uh, and his family with him. And then we had the funeral and nobody was sad because he had died so well. Is this young man, there was a lot of things he needed to do before he died. And this acute crisis of pain, which was, you know, associated with his death, prevented any of that from happening. And it prevented his wife from ever coming to terms with his death. Palliative care means uh, having a situation which a person lives with dignity until their last breath. I remember being with people as they died, and they might die mid-sentence, but cogent with the proper use of an opioid. My greatest wish is that people who are healthy don't worry. This, this period in life, this period of growth and development can be well, can be better than you can imagine. So just like no woman can imagine what childbirth is like, and there are some things about which she may be frightened. Overall, she and her family trust that it will be well, that the child will be healthy, that the experience will be overall worthwhile and something you would never miss. The same is true for the end of life. You can't imagine what it will be like for you, but the experience of others well cared for is something that you don't want to miss.